Well, hi there. Thank you so much for dropping by this episode of Media Champions. I'm your host, Mary Therese Griffin in Atlanta. Today, we have Robert Riley on the program from Mixed Handed Branding. So glad you could join us today. Robert, welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. I am fascinated with your website, with what you do, but I have to know, how did you come up with the name Mixed Handed Branding? Uh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> we came, oh, I came up with the name because I am actually mixed handed. It's a uh, kind of a term for ambidextrous. Uh, it's mm -hmm. actually ambidextrous is you do everything with uh, both hands equally, but um, I actually do have dominant hands for different tasks and things that I do. And so what um, that actually kind of uh, spawned was mixed handed branding because that's the technical term for it. And it uh, kind of works out great because we do a lot of different things. And so it just uh, fit me and it fit our organization. Well, you guys certainly have both hands and a lot of pies, as I see from your website. Congratulations. I know you're busy and you've been doing this a while. Let's talk about this world of media and marketing and trends and how fast they are changing. Where do you see the trends going in the next couple of years? Because they are changing so fast. Yeah, you know, obviously, um, what we're finding is that the digital component of what we do um, is needing more of a physical component to match the digital space to help um, kind of cut through some of the clutter and connect with our audiences in different ways. Uh, that's been a, a kind of a um, ongoing transition. A lot of people really wanted to focus in the digital space only. Um, you know, social media and stuff like that, which is great. Uh, but what we're finding is that your audience isn't all there. And so, you know, by being able to diversify and match what you're doing in these digital spaces, uh, we found really effective ways to help our clients um, match up, you know, what's happening in their locations as well as what's going online digitally. Well, it makes perfect sense to me. I mean, if you were to, you know, compare it, I'm kind of the queen of analogies, but let's compare it to the financial world. You, you got to diversify. You can't put all your eggs yeah. in one basket because you're, you're not going to reach maximum return on your investment. Walk me through, Robert, how you are helping a potential client understand where they need to be putting their story out there, because not every platform is for everybody. And like you said, it's 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 not all just social media and likes. Uh, contrary to what a lot of people think, it's it's not all about the likes, is it? It's it's definitely not all about the likes. Um, the likes are only as good as the people that are going to actually support your brand. So you know that's a common misconception that we talk to our clients about is that you know you could have ten thousand likes, but if only a thousand are within your location or that are you know in love with your brand, they're really the only ones that are going to continue to be your brand ambassadors, the ones that are going to continue to shop with you or continue to buy your products or even come into your store. Um, so it's definitely not about the likes. It's about the quality of the like, the quality of the audience, the person that you're um, meeting, you know, that you're trying to um, create a relationship with, because that's what we're always trying to do with our brands and, and what we do. And, and the process that we go through is um, a consultative process. We don't um, have one size shoe that fits for everybody. Um, what we uh, <clears throat> have is more of a approach where we talk about what the operations are. We, we try to meet what the organization's needs are and then grow with them and add layers of complexity as that organization's operations can um, utilize those things. So, you know, obviously we have more complex strategies for bigger clients that have more bandwidth, uh, larger operational capacities, different locations, things like that. And then we have a lot smaller, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, reach and uh, marketing for some of these smaller clients that are maybe, you know, just getting started and things like that, um, that just don't require uh, as much, um, you know, uh, operational success and, and uh, as, as much operational, um, I guess, marketing needs, if you will. You know, the, the content portion of it is, is so important. And and I'm, I'm curious to know if, if you could you know, walk me through when you're talking with a potential client that what is the difference between 
content marketing and content creation? Because there is a difference and you have to have both. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the content uh, creation, you know, what we do is we ensure that your content is consistent. And then um, how we go about, you know, that content creation is trying to figure out what are your core competencies? What makes you um, able to be the business that you are? What is the um, thing that's going to allow you to cut through the clutter, right? Um, That Mm -hmm. is the creation of the content that we're looking at. The content marketing are the channels that we use to put that content creation out on, Um, you know, that the marketing aspect of it, there's a lot of different channels. Once again, going back to what we're seeing is, you know, a lot of people think that it's just social media. That's like the only way that you're going to get your message out there. But what we found is you've got to use a lot of different ways in order to get your message out into the right areas. And then also where that targeting is. And that's all about content marketing, you know, whether that's, you know, building your own databases for emails, whether that's social media, whether that's print advertising, that could be direct mail pieces, depending on the scope of your business, what you're trying to do and who you're trying to reach. Which is why connecting with a subject matter expert like you is absolutely crucial. Uh, Robert, we are out of time, but I do hope you'll come back and continue the discussion. I'd love to talk to you more about uh, partnerships and also continue the discussion about this uh, diversification that everybody needs with marketing, because uh, we could probably talk for 30 minutes about it, but I'd love to still pick your brain. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you so much. Thanks for what you do, Robert. And the rest of you can, you can connect with Robert. We'll help you do that. You can find him by finding us right here at dailyadbrief.com. I'm Mary Therese Griffin in Atlanta. We'll see you next time for more Media Champions. Simplify presents Addressable CTV, combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's Addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's Addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.